Now, what differentiates DNA from RNA other than the fact then f that first, for DNA you have deoxyribose as the 5 carbon sugar and RNA you having ribose, and second, that in DNA we have thymine and in RNA we have uracil. Well, I think it would be good if we're going to discuss it according to the function of these two nucleic acids. Alright, so actually if we draw it here, I'm going to draw a cell here, alright, let's say that that's a cell membrane, this is cytoplasm, and this is the nucleus, alright, this is the nucleus. And in the nucleus, you find DNA, alright, in double helix. Later on, we will see that that double helix will be opened up so you can get a single helix such as here, and then um, when the DNA is turned into RNA but by a certain process, for each of these bases, they will get their complementary pair. Remember that um, we have base pairing and rules for that is adenine only binds to thymine or uracil and cytosine binds, binds to guanine. So if we're going to do it, it here, for example, in RNA, thymine or uracil again would become adenine. So when this one becomes transcribed to RNA, alright, alright, when this one becomes RNA, the T would become its pair, which is actually A. Now, for A, it will become T, right? But that's for DNA. Remember, for RNA, the T becomes U, alright? The thymine becomes uracil, alright? And then, there is no there is no conflict here. Cytosine always going to pair with guanine. So, cytosine here becomes guanine if it becomes RNA. And then, we just follow the same par particular pattern here. Alright, T, A, A, then A would become T, but again that becomes U because now we have an RNA, then A, we have U, we have G, we have U. Alright, so right, the process right here that we did from RNA to RNA is known as transcription. All right, you transcribed the uh, DNA into a particular RNA, and the purpose is of the RNA here that you produce is the RNA would now give rise to our particular protein. But first, they become amino acids, which would link up to become proteins. And why did I have to mention that? Well, because in the formation of proteins from RNA, it occurs slowly amino acid after each amino acid and what you see in RNA is a particular pattern of three bases together alright like this one we have three and then you have three you have three here uh, each of this is known as a codon and for a codon there is a particular amino acid that would be coded by a codon right? That's why it's like a hold on. It codes for a particular amino acid. Alright? For example, I, I just got this from my reference. AUG here would um, give us the amino acid methionine. AAU would give us a particular amino acid asparagine or N. And UGU would give us the amino acid cysteine. So, um, good thing you don't have to memorize these codons and another thing is that we're going to discuss codons later on when we get to the process wherein RNA becomes proteins but we're not yet there we just want to discuss what's, I what's the importance of all of this alright so again we have DNA here alright um, you may be asking why shouldn't why, why couldn't DNA just become proteins you know, I mean, why did you have to make them RNA first and then you make them proteins when, in fact, when you have DNA, you just have almost the same, alright, you almost have just the same components, only the difference is the thymine becomes uracil. The thing here is, um, this is the reason why the one that is particularly responsible for protein synthesis is the organelle known as the ribosome. I think we know that already. But the ribosomes are located outside the nucleus. Alright, they're located outside the nucleus. The DNA is located inside the nucleus. You cannot put the DNA outside the nucleus in order to interact with the ribosome. They're stuck here. Like, they're too large to even go out of the nucleus. So what it's going to do is, inside the nucleus, DNA would become RNA, 
and RNA can pass through the nuclear membrane. So what's what is what it's going to do is go out of the nuclear membrane. It's going to be the one which will now interact with the ribosome to give you the protein. All right. It's just like um, the analogy that we use here is like you're in a library. DNA is like the book you have in the library. You cannot get it out. You cannot steal it away from the library. It's in the library. But uh, if you really want to read that and to understand it, you turn it into something like RNA, something smaller. So this is like a photocopy of the book. And then this is the thing that you can get away from the library. And this is the one that you read outside, for example, at your home in order to understand or to unlock something. All right. For example, you get a cookbook, you want to cook something, then you get a photocopy of that book in the library and then the protein would be the food that you're going to generate after finally following the instructions that you photocopied, something like that. And uh, these processes that um, revolve around the formation of proteins starting off from the deoxyribonucleic acids is known as the central dogma of molecular biology. So again, you start off with DNA inside the nucleus, can't get it out, you turn it into an RNA, which will get out of the nucleus and interact with the ribosome to give you the protein. Alright, first things first, DNA is supposed to be the kind of the master formula all right you cannot alter it the moment you alter parts of the dna you're going to alter a lot of the functions of the uh, of the proteins that are going to come out from that dna so um dna might get degraded and so you need to keep copies of dna over time to avoid um to avoid losing that particular master formula so in order to retain DNA over time or the, the particular information, it must replicate, it, it must be able to make copies out of itself so that the information is retained over time. So the particular name of the process is replication because it replicates itself, all right? And then DNA must then be turned into RNA in order to be used to, for, to form proteins and again I have already said that the name of that is transcription and then finally the process of RNA going to the ribosome to finally make proteins is well it's, it's, it's known as protein synthesis but another name for that is translation because now you're going to translate it from the language of nucleic acids of nucleotides to I mean nucleotides, bases, nitrogenous bases to the language of proteins which are amino acids and peptide bonds. So that's uh, what it is. So you have three processes in the central dogma of molecular biology, replication, transcription, and translation. And so um, in the next video, we would start with replication. <laughs>